Hello and welcome to Sketch Together. My name is Pablo Stanley, and today we're going to go over 15 quick tips for Envision Studio. So here's a list of all the different tips we're going to go over, and let's just go over them super quickly. So the first one is about adding fills and corner radius to containers. So for example, here I have this text layer, and if I turn it into a container, just press Command G, and then here instead of group, I change it into a container, and then I can add a fill to it. I can add a specific color if I wanted to, and I can make it a little bit bigger. And as you can see, there is no rectangle. This is part of the group. Over here on my layers list, it's still just a group and one text layer. The fill is being applied to the container. And I can even add a corner radius if I wanted to. So let's add a corner radius. And then I'm just going to center this little guy here. And there you go. So now the container has a fill and a corner radius. Now, another thing that probably you didn't know is that you can copy and paste an image as a fill. So for example, let me go over here and have an image ready. I'm going to copy this image and I can go back to my shape and over here, instead of uh, one of these fills, I want to go to the one on, on the tab on the right and I can just paste Command V and there you go. I can do the same with all of these images. I can just Command Paste here on the image tab. I just paste it and there you go. We have an image as a fill. Quick tip. Something that makes a studio super cool is you, you can add interactions to your prototypes. Uh, but something that makes it even cooler is you can add timer interactions. So for example, here I have this uh, little artboard. I'm going to duplicate it. So now I'm going to add an interaction that goes from this artboard to this other artboard. So I press C. And then here on the trigger, instead of a click, I'm going to change it to a timer interaction. So now after a timeout of, I don't know, one second, I can edit this if I wanted to. I'm going to say that it uh, moves to this artboard and I'm going to say that the transition is going to be just instant. And I'm going to save this. I'm going to make it some changes to this little guy just so we can see the edits. And I'm, I preview the animation. And now we can see that uh, the animation happened. And now after one second, it went to the next artboard. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Quick tip. Now, number four, creating a loop with timer interactions. This is pretty simple. This is just the same as before. So we're going to uh, duplicate this artboard over here. And let's say that it moves a little bit. And now I want to go from this to this and then from this to this. All I have to do is just create an interaction that goes timer. And I'm going to put a timeout of zero and I'm going to put motion. And I'm going to say that it takes, I don't know, 0.8 seconds. And now I'm going to do the same from this one to this one. And I'm going to see timeout zero and I'm going to keep the same settings on the motion. So now when I preview this, see it? There you go. So now it's creating a loop uh, between the two states because both artboards have time interactions. Quick tip. Now, something that is really useful is how to rearrange layers using keyboard shortcuts. So for example, this guy, I want to put it all the way to the bottom. So I can just press command option and then the arrow keys up and down. So I'm going to say down and that way it moves it below. And then if I press command option up, it moves it one layer up and then another one if I keep pressing. There you go. Quick tip number six. And this is for resizing layers with keyboard shortcuts, which is pretty similar to the last keyboard shortcut, but this one is a little bit easier. So with this one, you just select a layer, then press command and then the arrow keys. So up will make it a little bit uh, shorter and down will make it a little bit taller, as you can see. And then also you can use the left and right arrow keys. So I press command and then left, and you see how it's getting a little bit uh, shorter and then right and it's going to get a little bit longer. Now you can also press command shift and then this will make a super notch, a super transform. So press command shift and then see, now it's doing it in 10 pixels. So you can, also do this with multiple layers selected. Quick tip. Okay, on this one, you can copy and paste styles between layers. For example, I want 
to turn this one into the same blue as this one. So all I have to do is go to edit, copy, copy style. You can also just press command option C and then go over here, command option V. And there you go. Now I'm pasting the style. Uh, you can also do it uh, with right clicking and then say copy style and then over here, paste the style. This also works with text layers. So over here, I can copy the style and then over here, I can paste it. Pretty useful stuff. Okay, tip number eight, it's kind of a combo. On this one, we're going to learn how to use scrolling and pinning. So any artboard by default is uh, scrollable uh, vertically, but you can also change this to horizontal or to both. But let's keep it on vertical. And now if you preview this, now this uh, artboard is scrollable. Uh, but sometimes you want some elements to be pinned so they don't move. So you can achieve that by just selecting the layer and over here on this little icon, you just press it and now let's preview it again. And now when I scroll, that element is pinned. Pretty, pretty nice. Okay, tip number nine. You can hide and unhide elements and components. Sometimes this is really useful when you have complex components, but this same component, you want to use it in different instances and in some instances, some icons or some elements, you don't want them to be visible. So all you have to do is just select the component and over here on the layers list, you can just hide the one that you don't want. For example, this one, I don't want the info to appear there. And on this one, I don't want the Chevron or the info to appear. And there you go. The three of them are the same symbol. Uh, we are just hiding and unhiding some elements uh, to show different instances. Number 10. And this one is more of a visual design a tip. And this is about using transparency in text. Uh, so sometimes you want to, uh, some of your text, you want it to be a little bit like, like faded or like gray. So this works great when it's, you are on a white background. So over here, I have a gray uh, color on my text and this looks okay on a white background, but that same color on a color background might not work as well. So even let's say that I want to make it a little bit like this, it starts looking a little bit muddy. So what you can do is just change this one, uh, the, change the color all the way to black. And then instead of uh, using uh, a, a gray color, you use opacity. So let's say that it turns to 60%. And now this text layer works great on white, but also on a colored. So, and because now it's getting a little bit of that color from the background. So if I change it to, for example, an orangey, you see that this color is, is the black on top of the yellowish uh, background. And it's getting a little bit of that, of that tint, which is pretty cool. It looks better on the eyes. Now, tip number 11 is about aligning objects inside a container. So uh, whenever you align something, uh, let's say for example, this little guy, if I align it to the center, it's aligned to the center of the artboard. Let's say that I align this to the center of the artboard uh, and or align to the right of the artboard. So it's aligning to all those things. But when you have elements that are inside a container, then the elements uh, 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 align to the bounds of the container. Let's say that all of these elements, I'm going to turn them into a container. There you go. Now they are a container. And now if I align this to the center, it's aligning to the center of the container of the bounds of this element and not to the artboard. The same one with this, if I align it to the top and to the center, it's aligning to the bounds of the container and not of the artboard. This allows you to go way faster when you are creating your components and all your elements in different uh, containers. Okay, tip number 12 is about aligning vectors in custom shapes. So over here, if I press here, I'm going to see that all of these uh, uh, vectors are all over the place, but I can just select them with pressing shift and then I can align them just like any other object. I'm going to align these to the left, for example, and align them to the left. And there you go. Now it's a rectangle. 
Something that is really useful is that you can copy and paste interactions, just as if you were going to copy and paste an element. So for example here, I'm going to create an interaction that takes me here, and I'm going to say that this one is a preset of a slide left, and it's done with a trigger of a tap. I'm going to save this, and now I want to apply the same to this element, and instead of doing it all over again, all I can do is just like right click and then say copy interactions. And then over here, I just right click and say paste interactions. And now both elements have the same interaction taking me to the same place with the same transition. Okay, quick tip number 14. You can select elements inside groups by just pressing command and click. So if I wanted to select this cookie, then I'll have to double click and then double click again, which is, which is okay, but sometimes you want to be a little bit faster. So all you have to do is just pressing command and click and boom. It goes straight to that element inside that group, inside that group. It's just like, you don't have to double click anymore. It just selects the element that you want and you can just like do this. And something that is really cool too is if you press command, shift and click and you, now you can select elements inside different groups and modify them. Okay, quick tip number 15, last but not least, you can switch between light and dark mode. You just go to the view menu and then over here on theme, you can just change it from dark to light. And again, from theme, from light to dark. And that's it. Those are 15 quick tips in Studio. You can get Envision Studio now. Just go to envisionapp.com slash studio and you can download it for free. And, and yeah, if you have another quick tip that you want to share, share it in the comments. And that's it, my friends. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.